How's it going guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Yanis Strokovs and uh, today we're gonna have a look at the dash on the Super Duke GT. I'm gonna go through all the menu systems, what it does, how to set things up. Uh, so it's gonna be for some people a bit of a boring video but a lot of people have requested it so here I am doing it. Uh, so if you've got any more questions after this please make sure you pop them in the comments down below and before we get into the video guys please hit that thumbs up button it really does make a massive difference to me and without further ado uh, let's just get into the video uh, let's roll that sweet sweet b-roll and the intro and get on with it Right, yes, guys, let's start off with uh, obviously turning the bike on. Now, excuse the reflections, so let me turn her on. The bike obviously goes through its little start procedure and uh, it tells you it's ready to race. How very uh, KTM like. So, first off, you can see that I've got a side stand warning on the left hand side, and we're going to cancel that off. And I've also got no petrol. Uh, and I should probably go and get some petrol. That would probably be a good idea to do so. Right, so I'm going to cancel that off with pressing the uh, back button. And now we're uh, presented with the main screen. Now, as you can see on the main screen, we have uh, eight customizable options in each box. So uh, I've got oil temperature, odometer, uh, fuel consumption in, and you can change the fuel consumption and what sort of uh, parameters you want to see it at. Uh, trip one, you have two uh, different trips that you can use, but I've got it set on trip one. And then on the other side, you've got phone signal, uh, tire pressures, front and rear, and my phone battery level, just because uh, I want to know what uh, my phone's battery is doing. So yeah, so let's start to get into the menus. So I'm going to start from the top and work our way down. And if you guys want to skip forwards, hopefully I would have put some time timestamps down below as well in the description. So let's start with KTM My Ride. If we go into KTM My Ride, first of all, we can do uh, control our audio settings. So uh, so control your music, whatnot. So that's pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to pause that now so I don't play it over there in my helmet. Uh, but for these settings to work, you need to have your phone and your helmet connected. I mean, when I say helmet, I say headset. So if I go back out of that, we go back down, we've got the navigational menu, we've got navigation settings, voice navigation, and turn-by-turn -turn navigation. If you enable voice navigation, it will not display any navigation on the screen. It'll just uh, tell you what to do. Uh, if we go back out of there, navigational info, that again, when navigation is running, is going to tell us our target distance and our t arrival time. And I'm just going to wait for this car to go by. And then uh, the next thing uh, down below is our volume setting. Now, you've got 20 uh, steps of volume that you can control on your headset. Uh, it is independent to the headset and your phone so my advice is uh, always to have the phone up to the max and then what I do is I have this up to the max usually as well and then I control the volume with uh, my headset on uh, on my helmet because I find it easier to control the volume that way a lot more accurately as well and then if we go back down uh, one more setting we've got the pairing settings for the Bluetooth so if I go into phone you can see that my uh, phone is paired there uh, I can pair other phones as well and then my headset for m myself and the pillion headset as well so if we go out of this menu here, we go down to info, 
This is our trip information here. So trip one, it tells me it tells you everything you want to know about the trip, uh, what your fuel range is in that trip, your trip time, your average speed, uh, your average fuel consumption, and what the mileage is in that trip. Same sort of thing for trip two. And if you ever want to uh, uh, reset these trips, you just press and hold the set button, and then that resets that trip. So let's go out of that again. General info is. Just as it speaks, general info, you've got your date, your odometer, your battery, and your oil temperature, all in a very handy, accessible way to see it. So let me go back out of that one. Uh, then we got uh, tire, uh, tire pressures. Again, uh, you need to be rolling for your tire pressures to show. They won't show uh, when you're stationary. Back down, you've got warnings. Uh, so fuel reserve and side stand are my current warnings. Once I start riding the side stand, uh, warning is going to go away and uh, not bother me anymore. Uh, but the fuel reserve is still going to stay because I should probably get some fuel. Anyways, so let's go back out of there. Service is however uh, however long you've got until your next service, when your next service is due. So it's either mileage or the, uh, the time. So whichever either way, uh, pretty self-explanatory in that one. Extra functions is all the extra functions that are enabled on your bike. So you can see that I've got the track mode, hill hold, quick shifter plus and MSR enabled on my bike. Now quick shifter plus is a standard option apart from for some reason they show it in extra functions. Uh, that's just how it goes. So let's go back out of that and go into uh, ride mode. Ride mode is uh, exactly that. It changes your ride modes so at the moment i'm in sport but you've also got street rain and track now i'm going to go into track mode right now and show you the track settings um, so if i go into track mode now you've got throttle response you've got track sport street anti-wheelie mode on or off launch control on or off again Layout, you have two different options. You either have a track layout or the performance performance layout. And we shall look at those in just a second. And then you can leave track mode. So if I go out of the menu system, this is what the track uh, screen looks like. You've got your gear indicator in the middle, all your uh, settings on the side, and then your slip and launch control adjustment with the speedometer right at the bottom as well. So if I change the layout to performance layout oh bollocks i've just left track mode let's go back into it and if i change the layout to performance mode it is a very similar layout to standard the only thing that uh, changes now is on the right hand side we have slip and launch control adjustment and you also have the uh throttle response as track so let's go back out of uh, out of track mode so if i go track and leave track there we go. So then obviously the other uh, rider modes is uh, sport, street and rain. Uh, rain basically dulls it down to about 130 brake. Now, it might sound quite, quite, quite little, but I mean 130 brake in the rain is 130 brake in the rain with uh, ridiculous amounts of torque. So if I go into motorcycle now and in this setting here, let's just go back to the top and wait for this uh, van to go by. Yeah, and uh, he was probably thinking that I looked like a right pleb because I've got a pair of uh, headphones on and uh, all this uh, fancy dancy setup. Anyways, uh, in the motorcycle se uh, settings, we have our heated grip controls, standard obviously on the Super Duke GT, and uh, you have the uh, different levels of it. And then if I go down, I've got my heated seat controls, and if I go into that is the different levels of that. Load settings, if I go into the load settings, that adjusts the preload on the front and the back, uh, depending on whether I have just myself on the bike and my fat bum uh, if I have rider and luggage so that is me my fat bum and some luggage or if I have uh, some sweet sexy totty on the back which obviously is never gonna happen uh, or if I have both some nice sexy lady and uh, some luggage so let me go out of this menu again and then the next one is our dampening settings our dampening settings are very very similar to our uh, throttle settings you have sport street and comfort and for some reason on my screen uh since i've been messing about with uh, the dash and whatnot i have off-road but 
that just throws up an error. So you won't have off-road, it's just my bike being a bit weird. Uh, then back down here we have uh, our MTC, so multi-traction control, or uh, an MSR, so uh, motor slip, re uh, slip regulator. We can either turn those on or off, but we're gonna uh, leave that alone right now. If I just go on, on in here, it just says on or off. If I go down then, we have our ABS setting. If I go into ABS setting, I have road or supermoto. Now, supermoto mode, the only thing that it, that allows you to really do is lock up the rear wheel and be a bit of a hooligan on a 213 kilo bike. Because why wouldn't you want to have a supermoto setting on the, something like this? So let's go out of this menu. Quick shifter, we can turn it on or off. Obviously, we want the quick shifter on, let's be fair. And then hill hold as well. So hill hold uh, basically allows, uh, it automatically applies a rear brake if you're on an incline of 10 degrees or more, which is very, very handy, especially if you've got little short stubby legs and you've got loads of luggage on the back. It just avoids those uh, embarrassing moments of possibly dropping the bike, and which is not something that we want. So let's go back into the menu settings. Uh, let's go out of hill hold and back down to settings now from uh, down one down for a motorcycle and I'm starting to lose track of what I was talking about but anyways we have favorites now favorites is uh, obviously the main screen we can uh, customize all that so those are all all of our slots so slot one uh, anyways we can customize all these that's exactly what we talked about in the first place so let's go out of here come back out quick selector so the quick selector is your up and down buttons on your left handlebar. Either uh, pressing up or down is going to uh, bring up those menus. So for, my, for me, quick selector 1 is up, which uh, enables my audio controls. Quick selector 2 is my heated grip controls, because those are two controls that I want to get to really easily and really quickly. So then we have Bluetooth. We can either turn Bluetooth on or off. Uh, shift light, we can adjust when our shift light comes on, when it starts to flash, and whether we want that feature or not. Uh, then daytime running lights, that is either on or off. Again, uh, if you have it off, it will just uh, your main beam will just be on, so the LEDs around the outside won't be on, uh, and just your main beam. Now. They do recommend in foggy conditions, if it's quite bright but foggy, uh, make sure you uh, put daytime running lights on off, otherwise your main beam is not going to be on. So let's go back into the menus there. Uh, clock date, uh, obviously you can adjust your time and date. Uh, units, again, you can adjust all the units that you want. If you go into Europe, uh, you want to set to kilometers an hour, you can do that in that menu. Language, uh, obviously uh, English UK or English US or uh, all the other uh, languages that are available. Heater grips, uh, that again just allows us to enable them. Same sort of thing with heated seats and cornering light tests just allows us to perform a test on the cornering lights. Uh, so... That is everything on uh, the dash, and as quickly as I could, try to be as uh, explanatory, explanatory, is that even a word? Uh, anyways, I tried to be as uh, explaining, anyways, I'm lost now. I hope you uh, found that useful, guys, and I shall see you in the next video, so cheers for watching.